Got my small triangle somewhere. You got them over here, boss. This one okay? Yeah, need a little triangle for the straight edge, yeah. Okay. Well, it's casual, you're on. Okay. Tell them what you're going to do. All right, I've got this suitcase, and this is Ginger Cook, and we're going on a trip, and um, plain back suitcases are boring, so I'm going to take this painting, which original's already been sold, and I'm going to go ahead. I've kind of just chalked on here, so I kind of know where I'm going with this. All right, that's my painting, and we're just going to go ahead and start. Just my normal palette, and uh, I think I'm going to take this brush, Little bright number eight. I've got to be careful so I'm gonna get water on this picture then. Alright, so we're gonna start with the white paint. And I'm gonna come in here like this. And first off, wherever there's going to be yellow, we're gonna paint white. Now I know that this is gonna be my uh, and I'm gonna do a ragged edge here. Just uh, some sort of raggedy edge. We're not trying to, kind of a feathered edge. I could tape an edge, which would have been a thought, you know, just to tape a perfectly clean edge to it. You know, John, that would have been a good thought, too. I like feather. You like feathers? All right. What's Since feathers? you do, this is my case. Okay. You practice on my case first. I, okay. I, I think the, I like it just feathered out like that. All right. All right, so we're going to feather it. Now yellow only paints over white so if you're starting off with something that's already black then our best bet is to start with some white paint first. This is just heavy body acrylic. But I don't have to be too careful with that. Now as I come up into here I'm going to add a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. Let me take some ultramarine blue and come up to here like this and again it's going to be feathered now as I come down this way because the suitcase is so dark I don't want this blue to be too light but I'm going to just or too dark so I'm going to just use the side of my brush here like that and eventually we'll bring it down a little bit further but I can do this much here with the blue and I'm going to just feather the top of this so it's not to uh, there we go something like that alright now what do we got here so we've got um, uh, this is white now I'm going to just stop a minute I can't pause um, maybe John can edit out the drawing. Alright, so I'm going to take another brush, uh, different, different clean one. Alright, now we're going to go into cad, you know, cad yellow light. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the yellow on over the white. See how beautifully that paints? There's the yellow, light yellow. As I come down a little further, I'm going to get a little yellow oxide with it. Let's have a rag in my hand. Use the side of my brush like this and kind of wipe that off. And I want a little bit of white paint up here. 
titanium up here like this. And I just feather this light lighter yellow up here. And let's take a little yellow and cad yellow medium and cad red medium. And I'm going to come down here like this and just using this brush very gently add a bit of orange down here. It's going to get a little bit brighter as I come down. Oh, that's pretty. It's like really very much like painting on a canvas. Not that different. Somebody's going to say, what was it like to paint on the suitcase? And I'm going to take this line here like this, little cad red medium like this. Just come straight here like that, like that. Okay, and uh, again, we're going to go a little bit brighter here with the cad red. Just tap that in. Pinch the brush, just tap it in, push it in, almost smudge it in. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some cad red medium and do the the rooftop here like that. And the same over here. Okay. So now next coat of blue. So a little phthalo blue and white. I'm going to brighten up this blue sky a bit. There you go. Oh, great. I can even see what this is looking like on the monitor. I'm going to take a little ultramarine, kind of next to that, so that the edge is a bit lighter. Okay. And then back down into the phthalo blue. Okay. Now. Very gently over a yellow that's been dried so we don't turn it green. Paint this blue sky in like that. Okay. Now, as long as I'm painting, I'll take the phthalo blue, the white, and I want to come about this far down like this. We have this um, video on how to do this on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. We have the exact video on how to paint this. It's a really fun painting to do. South American Sunset. Again, I want the edge to be just not quite so perfectly straight. Now I don't want a perfectly straight line there, so I'll move that. Okay, so now what else can I do? Well, I can just take a minute and dry everything. This wants to move a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to take a T-square and we're going to draw in. And first off, I'm going to just sketch in my steeple like that.
Okay. Southern Ocean Blue, I think. Our steeple. Let's see, let's change colors. This is ultramarine blue. The shade I always use in ultramarine blue, but this always gets ass. It's red shade. Not to uh, not green shade, ultramarine blue, red shade. And thalo blue, green shade. Those are the absolutely the questions that get asked a lot. Okay. Take a little bit of orange and put it in here like that. A little bit of medium and yellow. Goopy, practically worthless. How old is this paint? Man, it's ready to throw that too bad. Okay, here we go. Well, one thing I've noticed about painting on the suitcase, which is interesting, is that um, while it's very similar to canvas, and it is. It's it's, it's a very it's got some similarities for sure. It um, because the black is showing through underneath, it really affects how the colors are. It needs its own little spot of white around here somewhere, all by itself. In the places where I need it lighter, I'm going to have to put some white.
Okay, that was Southern Ocean Blue. This is the second coat of Thalo. Let's kind of feather that out. A little white and all the little blue. Brighten this up, going across here. And darken that. Okay. All right. Yeah, all right, what else have we got here? You know, John, what would be very helpful is another bucket just of clean water that I'll put somewhere else. Because this, this um, painting requires clean water. Clean water. All right, this is my next coat of yellow. No muddy yellows on my suitcase here. I would think not. On this side? Yes, yeah, fine. Somewhere over there. We can get to it. Because I notice as the yellow dries, it shrinks. It shrinks? It, it shrinks a little bit. Things are shrinking, and so you see a little of the black underneath. Just fine. That's just what. That's interesting, isn't it? Which, you know, can make for an arty piece, but. Nonetheless, um, you know, I mean, it can definitely can make for a very arty piece, but sure. that's all right. But we I want to be aware that it's doing that. that. Yeah, a little bit of water on the brush, fade that out. There, just fade that all there. Put some bright red here. Fade that in here like that. Okay, back to the cad red medium, just back on top here, like this. Okay, now what do we got? Back to the yellow. Now, yeah, let's see, what can we do here? It's interesting, I almost have to go with white and accent. All right, let's pull some white down like this. This is coat two of the paint. Okay, I'm going to have some of this color in here. A 
Okay. So let's try both from new blue and thalo for up here at the top again. Okay, so that's that's getting there. Yeah, we're getting it. Okay. Yeah, we got a little bit of reddish dark brown here in the street. Same thing down under here, like this. Okay, now take a little bit of cabinet medium and yellow. I'm going to start putting in some orange highlights. Some red ones. Okay, so I'm just trying to think of what I can do before I have to dry something again. Uh, can make some orange down over here, some brighter orange. Okay, so we need a we need a window right here.
You're also quiet on this one. I'm sorry, I'm just totally focused here, you guys. <laughs> I'm standing up, I'm painting, and I'm looking at the picture, and I'm seeing what happens to this canvas, which is changing every time I turn around, it's doing something different. So I think I've laid a color down, and then I have it. Seems to be absorbing in, or? Yeah, it kind of disappears on me, which is okay. And you didn't gesso this or anything? Yeah, I didn't gesso it. We could have, we could have gessoed it. Well, we didn't. I'm going to dry it now. Oh, where did I put the brush? Do you put it in here? A little one? Oh, here, yeah. Green container, green brush, not helpful. <laughs> okay, so, what do I got to do here? Well, I have more yellow to put. This is coat two of yellow. This painting is all about bright. Okay, where else can I put that color up here? Okay, there you go. It's coming along. Takes a little time, but it's coming. There we go. Now, okay, so we're getting there. This red light, let's see what that does. Oh, better. We needed to pop these reds. This is called Matisse Red Light. It's just, our CAD reds were just fading on us.
Okay, better. Yeah, what else can I do? Uh, pop the reds. Pop the reds a bit in here, like this. Take that red with some yellow and see what we get. Get a better, brighter orange. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, what else? Okay, that's gonna work. A little yellow oxide. Okay, that's nice. Let's try a little bit of yellow oxide white. It's all about layering colors. Okay. All right, now what do we got? Move this over here. Okay, I need some bright green. Means I need some more yellow out. Okay, Southern Ocean Blue, some bright green here. Okay, it's only green that's here, but that's where we want it. Okay, it's got some green there. There ought to be something that's See, let's make this door more straight up and down. There you go. One green door. One yellow orange window. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Take a little ultramarine blue brown. Okay, some dark windows up there. Let's make that. Just pure ultramarine blue. Which we have to lighten a bit. Okay, now let's put a little Dela with it. Okay, and then something blue around each window. Maybe purple. We haven't done purple yet. Let's get a little purple going here. That's pretty. It's 
tiny bit of purple there. Okay. How about a bit of purple up here? Okay. And a little bit of purple over here. Orange. Okay. Okay, all right, that's a good start. This is looking pretty good. I'm happy with this. Time to put in, so let's get a brighter green going here. Okay, let's see what else do we got. All right, what else? Uh, all right, so nothing really else can happen until we get the lamp post in, but I guess we could take a little purple and blue and put in the top of this building here like this. Okay, now let's take a little blue back here. Okay. All right, good enough. All right, now we got to dry everything. Now we're going to do a quick test about something. I'm going to sit down. I'm getting tired of uh, sitting down. All right, let me see what's going to happen here. Okay, is that going to peel off? Okay, it's going to want to peel. Okay, so that means that it's not really dry yet. have to do is uh, here's what we're going to do. This has got to just really dry for about an hour, John. Okay. 
and and then I'm going to coat it with some varnish. Okay. So medium and varnish. I'm going to seal this in here because I want to use tape for my light pole. And I won't be able to do that because the tape, what's going to happen is that tape is going to want to lift the light pole up. Right. So you're going to need to create a uh, isolation barrier? I'm going to have to create an isolation coat. So I'm going to just... Go ahead and just uh, go ahead and varnish that. And let that just totally dry. And then let's we'll just give it about an hour. This should really have dried. The acrylic should dry about an hour. The acrylic will have dried. And then we'll give it an isolation coat of the uh, color. And that's uh, fun. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Let's just say that that's, that's how we're going to paint that. Because it was going to get coated with varnish anyway. It's for sure going to get it anyway. So I'm looking at that going, that's, that's really our best, absolutely our best bet as far as uh, painting this goes. You need to wait an hour before you varnish it? Yeah. Just going to get that a rest, and I wonder if I shouldn't uh, varnish my other one that I'm going to cool. do. My suitcase that I'm going to do the parrot on, I think. I'm going to put the parrot on that. Alright, so we're going to switch suitcases, I think. And we'll just put this down and let it dry. Nice though, right? Yeah, that's cool. Day two! Didn't really need to do that part. Okay, so this has had overnight to dry, and we've given it two coats of Liquitex Medium and Varnish to, because we didn't do the gesso undercoating on this. It didn't want to stick to the canvas, but the the polymer medium and varnish actually molecularly binds to the paint and makes it like one big uh, mat of film that's also clinging to all this paint. So now it, it's very stable. So um, next time, just note to self, I would for sure um, do the, uh, you know, I would for sure paint the uh, Varnish, I mean, not the varnish, but the medium on first. Let's see. Um, see if my chalk's going to ride on here like this. I need a, my light pole comes right up into the sky like this. Okay, like that. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and the, uh, tape it. And it tapers a bit. So here it is. It's going to come like this. Let's see if I've got it right. I want it just about like like that and like this. Can you hand me that chalk over there, that soft chalk, please? 
It got right. moved. It got moved. What do you want? I don't know any of the soft chalks. I just need my soft chalk back. Yeah, that's fine. I want to be able to draw on this. Okay. Now I think we're gonna stop this about here. I don't know that I have it wide enough, but it is allowing me to. Here, let's just widen it down here like that. Okay, kind of at an angle like this. And uh, I'm going to say that this is the height of it right here. All right, so I don't want to push that down too hard. On the other hand, I don't want it to get away either. Little angle brush. John, would I be so kind to grab me some water, please? I somehow got off of here without it getting any. Yeah, just one. Okay, here's my light pole. And then I want a light highlight on it. Thank you. Oops. a little white paint on one side. Okay. There we go. There's our our light pole. I'm just going to soften up this one edge right here with my brush. All right, now before I do anything else, I'm going to dry this. Make sure this is dark down here. Might as well as I'm doing it. I'm going to put a little shadow underneath it like that. And then I'm going to just take a minute and dry that before I try to do the lights. Okay, so off of this way, I have two lamp posts that are coming here, and two down here like that. Okay, and I'm going to dry that. Boy, this is very important. I don't smear this. Okay, so now I need to come, I need a straight line right here. It's got to come, it's got to come right there like that in a straight line. Let's see if I can use this. There you go, that works. I want to come up like this. make a curve down here and straight down like that. I think I'm going to get a tinier brush. Here, let's get a smaller brush for this. Come straight down here like that. Here's this, this one. Now the nice thing about 
uh, the surface we've just put on here is that I can erase. If I get too much paint, for instance, I can just come up here with a clean brush, thin down something. I got it too wide right there. Rinse, wipe, swipe. There, okay, so I'm going to say that that's a, there we go. Now, this other one is, uh, here's the light of this one. Okay, a little white on that. That's the first light. Okay, now I'm kind of happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and just Try this and then do the next one. Now, the top of this one is going to curve right here. Down like this, so I need this one to be. Let's get a little purple. See what I can make here. It's going to come just past this one. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's get that. Mm, it looks a little crooked. Okay. Little crooked. One thing about it, if you've if you've done any kind of varnishing at all, you can wipe stuff off really easy. Okay. So that to be a bit thinner too. Okay. Alright, so that's not a sharp enough edge for that. Let me find a different edge. better. Okay. All 
All right, so now we're going to switch brushes again. Put this lamp post right here. Okay, a little bit of yellow, blue, and white. Lighten up that side. There we go. Okay, so now, um, I need to dry that and then put the white bulbs on. And the question will come up, why didn't I just take these two? I'm just I was just slightly worried about the the um slightly worried about to make sure that the tape was gonna stick here. Here, just too much water. Can't have any water on the brush. Okay, a little bit of blue in that, don't want it necessarily. Now this is going to come down in front of the building. Okay, so there's our our bulbs. Some water on here. I don't want it. Okay, now we're saying that there's this little. Like that. There's this little those those little lights there that are in the background. The front ones are slightly bigger. Just going to take a little bit of purple, do a little top cap on this one. Just suggest using a little purple, just to just suggest a little post right there. You're not going to really see all these posts. Just, just suggest a few going down the street like that. All right, so we're just going to put our person here. My person is going to be about between here and here. Let's start with the head. And then I'm going to have a little kind of a body going down like this. Kind of taper down like that, and then taper down more to the feet. Let's try a little purple and red here. It's almost black here. Okay, 
you don't really see anything of this couple. You're suggesting a couple walking here, but you're not really seeing anything, okay? Because she's right next to him, like this. I'm going to give her some sort of dress. I don't think I even gave her a dress on this other one, but I've given her one on this one. Okay. Feet have to be touched on the ground at the same time. Now, let's see, can we put any highlights on there? No. In fact, I'm almost tempted to do them out of black. Okay, let's see what else can we do here. Just make this a little darker here. Now, I'm just seeing. Oh, that's pretty much the picture. Okay. All right, now what? Um, break some of these shadows up here again. A little bit of black and alternating the phthalo blue. We had a blue, blue door right here. I think we'll make it purple. Little blue contrast. 
Now, I'm going to dry all that and see what we got for the last highlights. Okay, here's a little, little light from the street, right like that, the street light. And uh, make sure we have the second coat of white up here. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's take a little yellow and cross the, cross this way with it. Okay, I'm saying that that's pretty much, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, I think we've got some good depth in this. See anything else I want to do? Any other great colors I want to put in? Turquoisey color here. I do like turquoise next to orange. Right, I'm going to knock back this little white bit right here. It's a little too much. And uh, put a tiny bit right here. I think that's it, you guys. I think I'm done. And could you do more with this stuff? Yeah, you could. Like, for instance, 
Um, this red right here isn't very bright, so here's a second coat of red. It doesn't hurt once in a while to just do stuff like that. Okay. Alright, I think that that's it. Time to sign and move on and varnish. We're done with these suitcases and I think that's really exciting. So I need a little tiny brush to sign it with. Are all the brushes we used last night over there still? Everything you've got is over there. So you have a little one last night. thought I did. Didn't I have a little tiny brush? No, you had that long, long one that you didn't like using. Alright, here's one. I found it. Well, that, that's not it, too. That's not going to work. I don't want that one. I, had a, I thought I had a tea. Oh, I had one over here because I know I was using it. There we go. Well, that's a long one. There's a, there's one like this that's short. That's what we had last night that you used. Yeah. Now yeah, I found a smaller one, I thought. Uh, Not that I was aware of, nor did I clean the smaller one. Oh. Huh. Well. Note to self, get more, buy more small brushes. You need a dozen of those things. Okay, we'll make this one work. Well, I got this one going now. I'll tell you what, it, if you, you know, Varnishing with the medium and varnish makes a much smoother surface to paint on. So it's much easier to to do any small detail work. I've got to say that. Yeah, that's one thing. I need a line going out across this way. Onto its foot handle. Oh, you glued it back? Yeah. So I'll let that sit for until ten, tonight. All right, no, all right. Fine. So there, there we are. It's let that done. dry and we shellac it. We let that dry and then we uh, put the varnish on, another coat of varnish, and we should be. I need two coats of varnish on this one. Did I varnish that one last night? No. With parents. So let me varnish that now so then when they both will have two coats. Okay, so let's just varnish that one now. And that, that will be a good good thing to do to that one. Oh, nice, right? Okay, so varnish is here and cup is here. What happened to that lid? We don't know. <laughs> No, this Sammy. makes you crazy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Look how the colors come back on this now. Look at this. I love varnish. Look at that. Look at how that's popping up the colors on this bird. Look at that. Wow. That's nice. This is Gloss Medium and Varnish by Liquitex.
Yeah, so then when we get around to doing yours in about an hour, we can do this one again too. Don't think I missed anything. One thing I do see here is that um, there's a line here from the chalk that's not erasing. I don't see any others, but that was a... Well, I do, I see those. Okay, I think that's pretty good. See any? I think I'm good though, right? Right yeah. here? Yeah. And maybe this one on the edge there. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, a little varnish with that. Because that's why it's called medium varnish, because you can add varnish to the Color. paint. Which is kind of cool, right? You want that bigger piece? No. Okay. I think that's pretty good. All right. I mean, it's a suitcase. <laughs> we gotta get get real here on what is what's what. Well, some of that could be the. Um, well, I think the some, clear, of that's, that's, some of that's clear the gesso. It is. It's showing through. That's what it is. Okay. So take this away and I'll um, uh, start the next um, my next project, which is working on lessons for tonight. I think I got all this. Yeah. Well, I want to make sure I don't have any bubbles. Because they'll sure pop. Okay. I'm good. You're on. Okay, so this has got one coat of varnish. It's all dry. We're going to do another one. And again, just to remind you, this is our Liquitex. Um, oh, it's I didn't have the right stuff, John. What were you using? I mean, using glazing medium, which will work, right? But I wanted Liquitex medium and varnish. So let's try again. Here, let's change. You know, I've been using the wrong stuff the whole time. So yours was wrong too. That's this is wrong. bleeding me. Yes, that's, I'm telling you, you got to read the labels. <laughs> Why do they call stuff look the same? Well, because all their stuff is the same. It's 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 you know we're using yeah. So we're gonna pour that back in. It did work. It's nice and shiny. God, what should uh, okay? So, so it makes you wonder what what's the difference? You know, the, are these in the same stuff in different bottles? Hard to say. <laughs> But it did work, so we're going to use the varnish now. Isn't that funny? Here's the, the gloss medium and varnish. That's what I thought I was using the whole time. I was using glazing medium, but that's okay. It could be why it didn't seal as well that one time. Remember? When the, when I put it on and, the, and the, it and came up. Back, well, yeah. yeah. Because it, it wasn't be. what you thought it was. Yes. All right. So we still need two coats of this. All right. Here we go. So we're going to put two coats of this on. Now, remember, you always follow the brush strokes when you're varnishing. All right, so you just try to do that. Now this is going up and down because that's how we painted it. This is going sideways. I mean, this is working fine. That's this so is weird. beautiful. This is this is weird. So, um, wow, how funny is that? I wonder if this is bringing out the color even more. Well, of course, it looks just wet and juicy here because it's all there. Now we're going to do both suitcases. We're going to do the parrot, who also has had the glazing medium, and not the. <laughs> Not the varnish, man. This is a don't do what I say, do what I, you know, don't don't, don't do what I do, do what I say, because I certainly didn't. I'm always telling people read the bottles; they all look alike. They do. These cheap people, <laughs> just all the bottles are the same color; they all look alike. 
Okay, so here we go. Keep down like that. Here we go, yeah, like that. Come up with different color labels and different styles. Would it, would it kill them? No, apparently not. But it's, you know, obviously, you know what? Whatever it was, it worked. That glazing medium also is an acrylic. It's a polymer acrylic. So, but this does feel shinier to me. It does it look a little shiny. shiny. It's it's going to see. It's really going to seal it. Okay. It definitely is going to seal it. All right. I'm done with this already. So switch suitcases. You're right there. Okay. There you go. You. Ooh, I knew what a cap was. Yeah, me too. But you know, there's a room full of door, door full of caps over there. Pop some. See if something will we fit can, it. Something else will fit. Okay, that has to go flat, you guys. Yes. You can't ever once you varnish, you've got to uh, keep it flat. You don't want it running, and you should varnish flat. Don't varnish at, at an angle. Uh, you know. Okay. All right. So here's our parrot. Let me just see. Oh yeah. So I'm going to just see if this doesn't bring my colors out a little better. And I think it's already doing that. Look at that. So the glazing medium kind of worked, but look at this. Now, now, ha. Huh. All right, gosh. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, it is to me. <laughs> You're going, gee. No well, you know what? I'm just um, happy to do it. Um, I will look that up, though. You know who I should just ask? Is I, suggest, I should ask uh, my friend Daniel at Michael's. He'll tell me. Or not Michael's at Jerry's Artorama. He'll tell me. I'll say I used the glazing and then I went back with the with the varnish. And uh, what's the difference between the two? Um, Am I in big trouble for doing it? Oh, well, I don't think we're in big trouble because I varnish varnishes all right. Okay, so we're going to come. Remember, we're following the brush strokes in this nice brush here, like that. There we go. This is all varnishing. This is all beautifully varnishing. This. Uh, this painting like that. There you go. Here's Birdie. All around the head here. Okay, I think that's it. I mean, that's it's not. There's not a lot to varnishing. You just, of course, it doesn't hurt to use the right stuff. Just saying. <laughs> just doesn't hurt. But there you go. There's our picture. I think that that's going to be fine. Isn't that pretty? There it is. It's great. Our red macaw. And. Uh, you go right there. There you go. Just, I'm looking at the side and get a little bit of glare so I can see where it's... You know, make sure there's no puddling. You just don't yeah. want any puddling, right? Okay. There you go. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Do you have anything else I can varnish? Because I've got a big brush now. And a little bit of paint. I, mean, I should take oh, something yeah, to varnish fact, it. Since we used the wrong thing on mine. My little experiment I wanted to do. Okay, we're we're experimenting with varnish for now. Let's just try. Let's just do it. We're gonna just do a couple of these. These have just got these are little canvases with different colors on them. And we're just gonna varnish them, and then paint over them and see what happens if we just you know varnish an underpainting. We're just gonna see about something, something different to do. And uh, I don't think I have to do all of these, can I? I'd rather just do a painting as long as I'm doing something. Just saying. Well, I don't know how much you had. I've got quite a bit here. I've got one, I can, I've got enough for one little painting. You got a small painting I can do? You want to do this guy? Yeah, let me have that one. I'll do that one. That's pretty. Put that up here. Okay, so that one's one of the ones with. Oh, so that's sure. one of the YouTube videos. It's going to be on YouTube. I don't know when we're releasing it, but as long as that there, I'm going to varnish that one. Look what it does to the colors. Look what it did to this mahogany table. Look at that. Don't you love that? Just. Uh, Look at a student in the background. See how it brings all the colors back into this picture? Look at that. This is what I call a color popper. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? You always kind of follow the brush strokes going around the base like that. And two coats of varnish is ideal. Okay, and then uh, this is going across in front like that. Look at that. Isn't that just, boy, that really made a difference, didn't it? Let me just show you. Let me just show you on the edge here. See? Look at what happens when you, look at that. See? Can you see the edge? Look at that. Let me just show you. The, here, I'll just do the other edge. Just so you can see it. See? It's kind of dull. Look at that. It's like you re-wet it again. 
So lots of people say, why do you do that? Well, besides the fact that it seals the canvas, you do it because it really brings out the color. How pretty is that? Got, let me have that one with the abstract rose. I'll varnish that one. Now that we're just projects with ginger, right? Have to rename this video. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let's look at this one. Now, look at what's going to do to that red. Look at that. It just pops. Out. Nothing pops a red like varnish. Medium and varnish. Gloss, medium and varnish. Not the spray stuff. Spray stuff will not act as, as bright as this. Um, and there's different kinds of spray varnish. I don't want to make a blanket statement. But my opinion is that my, the things that I'm always the happiest with are this um, gloss varnish. Look at what it did to the dark color. It just brought it all out here like that. Okay, and here's our little leaf, little flower, flowers. Look at that. Isn't that just cool? Wow. That's just, and this is another YouTube video that's going to go up. If it's not up already, um, it will be up while we're gone um, on vacation, on kind of a, our working vacation, and um, in May, the first few weeks of May. So if you haven't done this, this is a fun lesson. If you haven't done this one, this is really fun. Our abstract uh, flowers, I think, is really pretty. All right, now what happens with a varnish brush like this? It's a soft brush. This has to be washed immediately. Don't leave it in the water. Just go to the sink and wash it immediately. That is your best shot at this, I promise you. Just helpful tips from Ginger. Have a great day, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I loved our painted suitcases. We'll let you know how they held up.